You, you have 20 minutes. Um, thank you very much, Karen Corla. I'm sharing my time with colleagues, and thank you to the ministers as well for being here. I'm delighted to move and um, introduce this motion to the Dáil this evening for debate. And firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the early years educators that assembled outside Leinster House this morning to highlight the serious issues with the National Child Care Scheme. And I know, Minister, you, you'll know I've mentioned this to you before, and I acknowledge that you've been saying there's a review um, underway, and I sincerely hope that you can guarantee that under allo the under allocation of hours through NCS and the provision of after school care will be looked at, and that you and your department will take on board the serious concerns highlighted and discussed this afternoon, also in the Children's Committee, because there was a discussion on that just before this debate. Um, I would also like to acknowledge, Minister, that you did come out to that uh, group today and you did meet with them and speak with them, and I think that's important, and I think that that should be acknowledged in fairness. Um, however, I am very disappointed, although maybe not surprised, that there is amendments to the motion here um, this evening, but in my opinion, it's a case of kicking this situation down the road even further. We don't have a great track record um, in relation to investment in the early years, and I think actually that was even acknowledged by some government parties over the weekend. We continue to facilitate a piecemeal approach to the early years, and um, I was, again, as I stress, I was very disappointed to see um, amendments to our motion. Um, despite all the commitments and policies that are unveiled, we are still faced with a situation where parents in some cases are paying the equivalent of a second mortgage or second rent. And a recent UNICEF survey ranked Ireland among the world's most expensive countries for early years and childcare. And we know the repercussions of exorbitant fees creates a significant barrier, particularly to women's employment. Women are adversely affected by higher fees, with many forced to stay out of the workforce while their children are small. And I've always thought it is really disingenuous for us to encourage women to go back to work and also, um, as we're in a political chamber, to encourage women into politics when we don't actually often have the services and the infrastructure um, you know, to support their return to work. And I am somebody that regularly has that juggling situation. Um, so, you know, I just think I try and raise that as often as I can in this chamber, and I will continue to do so until maybe we actually see some changes in relation to it. This motion is about providing families with a high quality early years education system that is affordable, accessible and sustainable. And I think it's obvious to everyone here tonight and in the wider public that the early years sector is in crisis. And that would, those were some of the comments from the committee earlier today as well from, from the witnesses. It also goes without saying that early years and childcare was in crisis before COVID, during COVID and will remain in crisis after COVID if we do not see the serious commitment to sustainable investment that's needed starting with next week's budget. I'm constantly con contacted by parents, early years educators and providers wanting to share their experiences using work and or operation in a broken system. And I know I'm not the only TD here this evening that has witnessed these failings of the current funding model in, in my constituency and all the constituencies around the country. It must be resourced adequately to provide lower fees for parents and stability for highly qualified professionals, but it must also deliver a sustainable future for providers. And those are the three key issues. The fees are far too high for parents, the wages are far too low for workers, and there's a serious issue for providers trying to keep their doors open. Um, the current funding model, I would say, is failing children, their families, their educators and early years providers. And I was struck in yesterday's national development plan that only one page was dedicated to early years and childcare, with projections of a growth in Ireland's population of around one million over the next decade. I would have liked to have seen real commitment to capital expenditure and a plan for how we propose to cater for this sector into the future. I I'm conscious that the clock hasn't moved, so I have absolutely no idea where I am in relation to time. I, I, I was reluctant to, to actually raise that, but I think I should say it in fairness to my colleagues. So um, I've spoken... Okay, thanks. <laughs> I've spoken many times about those working in the sector, and I really do want to... to um, acknowledge that this evening. I mean, it's such a difficult job. I genuinely don't know how people who work in the earlier sector sometimes do it. The commitment and dedication that they have to it is incredible. And, you know, it's, it's degree-led for the most part at this stage. People are spending years in college studying and furthering their professional development and are extremely experienced and qualified educators. And after a lifetime in the sector, many are still earning less than the living wage or the minimum wage in a lot of cases. There is very little sick leave, um, and what I'm always, I always try and give this example that people have to sign on for social welfare 
a lot of the time during the summer. And sometimes people actually don't believe that still happens, but we all know it is the reality. So it's nearly impossible to um, stay working in the sector. Um, a recent SIP2 survey showed 81% of all workers in the sector are unable to meet unexpected expenses and 38% are actively looking for work in another sector due to low pay. Now that's obviously going to affect the consistency, which is going to affect quality. So we need to see this being addressed. And as educators, parents and parents are squeezed at one end of the system, early year services, mainly small businesses, predominantly managed and owned by women, are being squeezed at the other. So I'm just going to finish on this point that the issue are fees, wages and sustainability for providers. The motion covers all of that, um, so I commend the motion to the House. Thanks, Thank you.